Heavy snow is falling, more is on the way, and then, yeah, November thaws right around the corner. But don't get lulled to sleep because winter comes back early December, and this time, it means business. Welcome to North Carolina and welcome into cold rain weather where we're tracking this early season anomalous cold and snow event. In fact, some areas in the south and east have tied or broken temperature and snowfall records. In fact, the snow is coming down so heavily here in Mitchell County. Road crews are struggling to keep up. You can see that snow falling here. It's a beautiful sight. Many areas have picked up a lot of snow. Parts of the Smokies, Appalachians, Blue Ridge, all the way up in here into West Virginia. This map is not quite updated yet because a lot more snow has fallen than what you're seeing here. And uh, But the Lake Effect snow machine has been kicked on and kicked on in a hurry. These waters are very warm and this Arctic air is very anomal anomalous for this time of year. And so we've seen some snow pile up around Marquette, back into Wisconsin, and in the Chicagoland area up here near South Bend and Gary, Indiana, have been the beneficiaries of big time snow. We've been looking at some areas picking up more than a foot of snow. By the time all said and done, some uh, much of these uh, places and locales along the shorelines of the lakes are going to be seeing five, six, seven, even eight to ten inches of snow where those snow bands set up. And so there's what we've seen fall so far. If we take a look at what's going on right now. Look at this. Got a big snow band coming right off of Lake Superior, Hancock, Marquette, getting some snow this morning, Rhinelander, Wausau, down to Madison, Rockford, Bloomington and uh, just west of uh, or east of Bloomington into Urbana looking at some snow shower activity if we scroll on over here and slide to the northeast Erie Jamestown Buffalo Rochester Kingston and Watertown all seeing snow this morning Ithaca Utica Binghamton looking at uh, Youngstown down here boy oh boy we're seeing the snowflakes filling the air so take it slow as you head out to work this morning but that's nothing that you guys aren't used to up there but you can see some of these brighter colors here if we zoom in here you can see this just in and around Jamestown this is where the snow's really really falling heavily up here in um, in uh, central New York just north of Syracuse looking at uh, some heavy snow falling maybe one to two inch per hour rates and where these bands set up that's where the snow's really going to pile up folks so looking at snow just really coming down this morning as we take a look at how much snow we can expect through the course of the day here's the rapid refresh and we're start out this morning and you can see those snow bands just sort of sit in place for a bit and they'll pivot as the wind shifts and kind of die out as we get on in toward the uh, afternoon and evening hours tonight. Another system will roll through over the course of the next couple of days bringing more snow and the temperatures will be a little bit warmer so there'll be some rain mixed in this time but uh, certainly going to see our fair share of snow up here in the northeast over the next several days. The higher terrain looks to pick up the most as we go on out in time as you would expect so that's what's going on in the snowfall department if we take a look here at what the snowfall forecast is from the rapid refresh you can see the banding setting up really nicely so we are under one of these bands look for two four even six eight inches of snow to uh, pile up over the course of the next few hours and as we head on out Look at that. Looks how uh, things uh, progress as we go through the day today into the overnight hours tonight. Things kind of shut off, but another system kind of works through and brings a little bit more snow back in here to Pennsylvania and the shores of Erie and Ontario and into upstate New York and eventually up in New England as we head on through the uh, day up here and, and especially just north of the uh, the U.S. Canadian border looking to pick up a whole bunch of snow up there. So that's kind of where the boundary of the cold air will be as we get later on into the week outside of the higher terrain. So things will warm up, but this has been quite an event. The National Weather Service, the official forecast, is showing uh, anywhere between two and as much as six to ten inches in spots. Now, obviously, this this is determined by where those snow bands set up, and they're very very fickle as you know if you live in this area so the higher uh, terrain up here the white and the green mountains looking in adirondacks of course look to pick up the uh, lion's share of the snow as you get that upslope component ringing out the moisture uh, from the atmosphere so that's what we've got going on over the next couple of days things will eventually wind down we'll warm up and we'll take a look at that as well here in a minute but right now we've got a couple of more days of cool temperatures to get to i'm going to change this map just a bit and um get us on a better display so we can kind of see the whole whole image here and uh, there we go so we're looking at um, high temperatures today really going up all the way into the 40s as far south as 
Charleston, South Carolina. You guys might get up to 50 being right on the water, but to look at this back here from Charleston all the way up toward Minneapolis. Highs in the 40s, 30s up here in New England, but look what's coming. This isn't going to be that many days behind these 40s, folks, so enjoy that. Highs in the 50s down here in Florida, 60s as you get farther south, and overnight lows tonight getting back into the 30s. We'll see a few areas below freezing across parts of the southeast, but the hard freeze that we saw this morning where we had multiple lows in the 20s all throughout this region. That will be a thing of the past and get into the rear view or shrink into the distance as we go on through the week. 20s up here in the northern plains back into the northeast as well. 30s, 40s, and even 50s down in Texas and then back into the 40s as we get on out toward the west coast warming up into the desert southwest as you would expect. That's where the warm air is. As we head on into tomorrow, look at that. The Arctic blast is in the rear view heading off into the distance and there we have 60s and 70s and even 80s down here across the southern border and uh, the southern tier of the nation. 60s back into Florida with 70s down toward Miami. And then tomorrow night, we'll dip into the 40s and uh, keep it cool up here in the Northeast, Midwest, and Great Lakes where we find temperatures below freezing. But everybody else is starting to warm up outside of the Rockies and the higher elevations out west. And that's what the temperature forecast is like for the next couple of days. We're going to take a look now and see what the rest of the week has in store. But first, I've got your weather IQ question, and we're going to see if you know your snowfall history. All right, here we go. What is the record for the greatest snowfall in a single 24-hour period in the U.S.? So obviously it happened in history, so you need to know your history, but you also need to know your records as well. And here are the possible answers. 75.8 inches in Silver Lake, Colorado, 53 or 52.3 inches rather in Mount Washington, New Hampshire, 61.7 inches in Juneau, Alaska, and 83.2 inches in Flagstaff, Arizona. If you know the answer, type in the comments, or if you just want to hazard a guess, otherwise wait till the end of the show, and I will let you know what the answer is coming up here in just a minute. Right now, we're going to take a look at the forecast for the rest of the week, and then we're going to look at another solar flare that occurred, an X5. This is the third in the last couple of days, and a CME from that is on the way to catch the other two CMEs that are about to impact the atmosphere and cause aurora viewing very far to the south based on normal or historical norms. Friends, if you haven't yet joined the team, hit the subscribe button right down below and give the content a like. Certainly leave a comment if there's something that's on your mind, a question or what kind of weather you like or what kind of weather you're seeing. Let me know that. Most importantly, if there's anything I can pray about for you, let me know. But uh, subscribe to the channel and share the content. All of that helps YouTube grow this channel. And I certainly appreciate all of the efforts there and all the support that you guys have shown me. Boy, oh boy, we've seen snow outside of the normal places for this time of year. Had a lot of reports here in the southeast of flurries, light snow even down at Myrtle Beach and coastal sections of North Carolina. And uh, even some light snow coated some of the surfaces around Charlotte and Lumberton, places like that. I was a little skeptical, I'll admit, but uh, we did see it. And um, certainly this was an anomalous event. As a matter of fact, if this trough had been in the United States uh, in the winter time like this, we would be talking about temperatures near zero for parts of the Southeast. It's colder in Florida than it has been in, and it is in Greenland, if you can believe that. That's how anomalous this trough is. But uh, things are gonna settle down, and particularly in the East. As we go on through the week and head into uh, tomorrow, by 7 p.m. tomorrow, things are still kind of unsettled a bit here in the northeast with some light snow and rain activity but everybody else looking good high pressure firmly in control as a big ridge builds into the country but the central and eastern portion of the country outside of the northeast but look what's happening out west we've got a lot of energy pushing in both in the north and in the south and it's going to bring some heavy rain to parts of california and Washington and Oregon and eventually into Idaho and Montana and Wyoming and some snow in Colorado. Definitely going to see some snow in the higher terrain out there. And as we move this along toward overnight Friday, that's where we'll stop at just a few showers here working through the Ohio Valley. But uh, all the action will be centered out west with heavy rain, snow, and uh, some wind as these systems come on shore. Mild for everybody else here in the states. And I'll show you those precipitation snow fall totals here in a second. But look at this. This is where your below normal temperatures are going to be over the next six to ten days. And uh, out here in the east and central portion of the country, we're going to see uh, temperatures mainly average above normal 
up in the northeast we're going to see troughing continue to work in up there to keep you guys a little bit unsettled with showers snow showers sometime two time and cooler than normal temperatures as far as the precipitation goes look at this as these systems track across the country they're going to bring rain to a good portion of real estate so most of the nation is either haven't seen a map like this in a long time to be honest most green except for a couple of white areas here in the east but th that is going to be something to behold should it play out like this and it looks like it will we're going to see plenty of rain the risk of heavy rain this is the hazards assessment so heavy rain down here in the deep south along the mississippi valley lower mississippi valley heavy snow parts of the colorado um, uh, rocky mountains here and of course the cascades and uh, the sierra nevada is going to stand to pick up some heavy snow and heavy rain just around those areas too particularly along the coastal sections of the west and here is what we're looking at in terms of total rain over the next uh, several days this takes us in through friday Friday evening and look several areas out here stand to pick up two to three four inches of rain particularly up here in the northern or the uh, higher peaks out in the uh, in Sierra Nevadas and the Cascades and places like that just all that upslope flow and that westerly flow this is this is a recipe this is how you guys get your big rainfall totals and precipitation totals and snowfall totals it's a lot of this is going to be snow in those higher elevations and there are the snowfall totals as we go on out through the week and it's hard to see but a lot of these areas are going to pick up one maybe even two feet of snow in the Cascades and the Sierra Nevadas as we go through the week folks and that is your weather update we're going to take a look in space because some stuff is happening up there and it just keeps happening and that is going to affect us down here and I'll tell you how boy oh boy oh boy we have had the solar flare activity this week X class X class X class this is an X5 the strongest one yet if there's any good about it it was a little bit on the impulsive side meaning it didn't continue to just uh, flare off and uh, but we still had a big CME launch I'll show you that in a second this is a big bright spot up here if we take a look at the Sun here scroll this down this is where the sunspot is that's been causing all the trouble and of course my pen is not going to work here of course but it's this area here uh, where the brightness is more bright spots coming around that means more sunspots coming in but this one here is nasty very very complex we'll get that off the screen look at this proton flux just going up 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 and uh, nothing here on the kp but you can expect that to change and i will show you that here as well look at this watch the uh, corona graph here friends i'm going to put this into motion and we'll watch it we've got plasma coming off the sun from a, a pre-existing cme and look what happens here at the end watch this before the thing stops boom look at that that is a big time cme it's a halo it means it's directed right at earth it's coming right toward us it spreads out in all directions look how fast this is this velocity on this thing is going to be massive we'll see about the density uh, as we get a little farther out in time here's the enlil and this shows you where the plasma is here's stop it right here there's the first CME that came off. Watch this. I'm going to just roll this along manually. Here's the second one from that second flare. It's going to actually catch this up. This little green dot here is Earth. You can see that here. And up here is the plasma density uh, as well. But this is the solar wind down at the bottom. That's where I'm looking at. Look at this thing just coming right at us. So it, over the next 24 to 48 hours, we're going to see this hit the magnetosphere and put us in probably strong geomagnetic storm conditions. There comes the density spiking as well. And so we'll probably see aurora travel uh, viewing uh, auroras will be produced we'll look at the magnetism as it gets into uh, the atmosphere but it will produce auroras and those may be view uh, viewable fairly far to the south so down here in north carolina i'm not going to rule us out yet but this is going to be an event worth watching uh, especially as you get along the northern tier of the United States and then maybe toward the middle of the country as well. And uh, there that goes. We're not even seeing a reflection of that new CME yet that's even stronger than both of these. So if you miss out on this first one, maybe you get a chance in a few more days after this. But boy, oh boy, look at the aurora. Very, very high likelihood of the northern lights tonight and then tomorrow as well. We'll see uh, just you know how fast this thing moves through but it's coming through pretty quick so make it a one-day shot of that and then another uh, blast approaching in a couple of days it has been an active solar period and hopefully uh, we won't see any communications disruptions or anything like that but certainly these strong CMEs have a tendency to do that sometimes so just be alert for that as well we'll see if there's any geomagnetic response uh, or sorry geological response we're definitely gonna have a geomagnetic response but uh, 
so far nothing going on. I think there was a 3.8 earthquake in California earlier, but uh, nothing else happening right now on the earthquake front. Certainly nothing going on on the volcanic front as well. We still have Sitkin and Shishaldin over here in the Aleutians, but nothing else happening there. And as far as the moon goes, we're at a 54 or 7.4 percent third quarter moon. We're on our way down to a new moon on November the 20th. Friends, and that is the show. We're going to wrap things up right now with the answer to today's IQ question. The question was, what is the record for the greatest snowfall in a single 24-hour period in the U.S.? And the answer is, out of all of these choices, 75.8 inches Silver Lake, Colorado, way back in 1921. I told you it was historic. It was historic. It was a historical event and a historic event since it was the only or the record-setting event. That's how we say it. And we'll just leave it at that, my friends. And so take care and have a wonderful afternoon. And we'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Cold Rain's Weather World. And I'm going to spend some time tomorrow digging into December and some of the latest data that we're looking at there because winter is coming back by all... Uh, observation of data that we have right now and so we'll talk more about that tomorrow when we have a chance to kind of go into it things are kind of winding down weather wise so we'll look at that and see what it has in store but you're going to like it if you're a winter weather lover I can tell you that so that's it for today I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning take care and God bless